Hey Vikings, I'm Sophia Bradley with the BHS Norseman newspaper and I'm here with Dr. Barbara Ibarra, who is the Associate Superintendent of Teaching and Learning from Bryan ISD. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being with us today. It's my pleasure. I have read several press releases and media pieces that have announced that the district scored an 86 for the 2022 TEA accountability rating. I know that can be a really complicated concept, but what does that mean exactly? (laughs) Well, first, let me just start by saying how proud we are of each of you, the students, as well as your families and all of the teachers. The outcomes that we receive through the state accountability system are reflective of the work that you've done over an entire school year, plus all the time you'd spent getting to that moment. When we look at accountability in the state of Texas, it it can be a little overwhelming, a little complicated, but in sense, they just really want to know how are we doing in terms of academic performance, but also how are we doing in terms of student growth? So when you see that number of an 86, it's not a singular test. It's actually multiple measures of data and different bits of information that all come together to give you that overall score of an 86. For example, um, the system is built on four different domains or categories. The first domain has your star and your EOC performance, how you did on the test. But it also has how are you doing as a school system with your graduation rate? How are you doing with college? and career and military readiness, all of that comes together in domain one. Domain two, we're looking at how did students grow from last year to this year, specifically in English and in mathematics. And then also, how are you doing compared to schools that serve students and populations and communities just like you? When you get over to domain three, we're looking at how are we doing with each of our different groups of students. So while there's three domains, there's four categories within it. All of that comes together in a number of different um, processes to get to that overall score of an 86. Okay. And in 2019, the district scored a 79, followed by two years of exemption because of COVID and the declared state of emergency. What accounts for the increase to an 86? So a lot of different things play into that increase from from the 79 all the way up to the 86. Some of the biggest levers that helped us move forward were the graduation rate, college career and military readiness, and then also student growth on STAR assessments, STAR and EOC. So students making academic improvement from one year to the next. But certainly our graduation rate, which has increased up to 91% for the four-year graduation rate, as well as college college career military readiness, which was also an A, those two levers in particular helped push the district forward along with that student performance on those assessments. All right. And the college career and military readiness rating that measures graduates' preparedness for college, the workforce, or the military using a variety of indicators. I know the district scored a 92 this year. Can you tell me a little bit a little bit more about how we achieved moving from a C rating to an A over the last few years? Absolutely. That is the work of all of our high school students and families and staff. So we actually changed our practices back when this first became a new indicator for the state in terms of the accountability system. And we recognized is that while it's always a district focus on making sure students are prepared for that post-secondary world, what are you going to do after high school? We weren't doing a good job of working with students in that ninth grade year to declare, how are you going to become college and career ready? What is your hope and pathway? We were doing four-year plans, but we weren't asking you to commit to one or the other, a career marker or a college marker or both. We'd love to see both, right? So we started looking at our ninth grade students and how can we partner with each ninth grade student and their parent and make sure that is a known priority and they have a declared pathway of how they're going to get there. That coupled with looking at our CTE offerings in conjunction with our advanced academics offerings, our board of trustees offers the free SAT and PSAT to all students. That was another way that we put an emphasis on making sure you had pathways both for college and for career. So all of those things together, along with tracking to make sure kids are ready, uh, all played into us making incremental improvements to get to that A for college and career and military readiness. All right. And what is the district implementing or plan to continue to keep our TEA score high and push it even higher? 
So that is one that we're actively um, working on and making sure that we have things in place. There are a lot of changes coming this year to STAR and EOC assessments. Uh, in of note is that every grade level, three through eight, will have a writing component on, on those assessments, not just fourth and seventh grade anymore. It's all built in, just like you guys at the high school do for English one and two. It'll be a part of that assessment. Additionally, the state's changing the types of questions. So previously on STAR and EOC, you guys had multiple choice questions, right? They're changing that to drag and drop, to hot spots, to matching, all sorts of different types of part A and B type questions. And so those question types are gonna be embedded all year long in the assessments that our students take as a part of the curriculum and instruction that takes place in everyday classrooms. So making sure students are prepared for that. We want to ensure that every student grows while they're with us. So you'll see schools and teachers looking at map growth to ensure that we're on track. That's part of reason that why we do the map assessment, the measures of academic progress, is that we know at the beginning of the year what you're ready to learn next and how can we make sure that we're customizing our instruction to take each student as far as we possibly can in the time that we have with them. So all of those things together, along with a continued focus and effort on CCMR and graduation rate, all come together in making sure that we are on track to do our best on the state accountability system. All right. Thank, uh, Dr. Ibarra, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today and helping us understand a little more about what the TEA rating means. It is my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.